In this lesson we're going to do some simple optimization and uh, the doublet is a little bit uh, too simple for this so I want to get out a more complicated lens. Let's look in the lens library we see number six is the triplet starting point so I'll get that out. I'll type get six and there's my triplet. It's a pretty lousy lens and that's just what we want because now we're going to improve this thing. Okay I need an optimization macro. <coughs> to do that I'll open the macro editor, the excellent editor, EE. -E. Type that and the, the editor opens. Now I've got to type some things in here. <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is put in a log command. Uh, the log number will then increment each time I run this thing. And that number gets assigned to the lens that the results. So it helps you keep track of things. And I'm going to put a store command. Store, let's say, 9. <clears throat> That's also handy. That's so if I really screw up, I can always get back my starting point. Now we need a parameter file, P-A-N-T. We're going to need a merit function, that's the aberration file. And, and I'm going to put a snapshot command. That'll um, update the pad display every iteration so you can watch what's happening. And then my synopsis command. Let's say oh, 20 iterations. Now you only need to type the first three characters of, of commands. I often type more than that just to make the um, to the window more, more readable. All right, we've got to put some things in here. Now the pant file gets the variables, and there's a button here you can use to help you define them. But it's so easy to, to do it by hand. I'm going to show you how to do it that way. I'm going to put a variable list, variable list, radii, all. That's easy enough. Variable list, thickness, all. Now the glass model, we want to I want to vary the, uh, the glass model on all the elements, but we've got to be careful because they don't all have a glass model at the moment. Um, so I'm going to tell it V glass model. I'm going to say 1, 3, and 6. This will force those services to be a glass model. <clears throat> now we go down here to the uh, merit function, the aberration file, and now I'm going to use the, uh, click on the the ready-made merit function. I'm going to use number 6, which is the default. It's, it's one that's very often useful. Comes back with that, and that's all we need. I'm going to run this. And there's our lens. It's done 20 passes already. And I'm going to go up here and run the simulated annealing, which is right there. It's almost always a good idea to run this after you've done your optimization. But the triplet is so simple, it, it can't make much more improvement, so I'm going to stop that. Okay, so we've done our optimization. Let's do a spec listing to see what it did. Here's what the lens came up with. These are the final uh, glasses in the um, in the lens, the model glasses. If I want to see what changed, I can say CHA changes. These are the variables that changed during the optimization. And I'm going to type, let's suppose I want to see the, the largest aberrations. Final, let's say the five largest. Here they are. This is a very handy way to look at, at uh, what the problems are. If there's one aberration that's much bigger than all the others, well, that, that, that's a clue to what's wrong with the lens. Uh, let me talk some more about what went into this merit function. Um, we have here the ant file. It, um, it got an AEC, that's automatic edge control. That's to prevent edge feathering. Let me show you how, how that works. I'm going to select those characters, and then down here in the tray, it gives the format target weight window. And if you want more information, you hit the F2 key, and the help file opens. Auto Edge Control, AEC, and here's the format for it. And the, um, the macro also had an ACC, which is Automatic Center Thickness Control, so lenses don't get too thick. Uh, and now we have a GSR. Let's look see what that is. I'll select that, and down here it says uh, some the format for that command. Let's hit the F2 and now we have automatic generation of ray aberrations. GSR is right here. And this is, and the, generates a sagittal fan of rays, corrects the XC. That's the X coordinate with respect to the chief ray. <coughs> and there's also some GNRs in here. And that um, generates a, a grid of rays and corrects the transverse, both X and Y coordinates. I'm going to scroll this down, and you can see what these ray patterns look like. So that's a brief introduction to what optimization is. I want to talk some more about the glass variables. If you look at the list of changes here, you'll see that surface one, it says crown BD. That means the crown boundary. 
three as a flint boundary and six again as a crown boundary. As the uh, glasses move, and it changes the index and it changes the Abbey number, it will usually hit a boundary somewhere, either the, the crown or the flint, or sometimes the index will become too high and too low, and the program won't let it go off of the glass chart. <clears throat> now, an interesting thing happens. If, if suppose the, the glass moves and, and it hits the, um, the boundary along the left side, which is where, where all the crown glasses are, well, when that happens, the, it, rather than just delete the variable completely, what the program does is it redefines it so that instead of moving around anywhere it wants to go in the glass chart, it moves up and down that boundary. That's called GBC, glass bounded crown. So you've lost one variable, but you didn't lose two of them. Now you can find out where do you want to be on that boundary. And surface three became a flint, glass bounded flint. So that explains where those glasses went. Now we can look at that in some more detail. Let's go to the pad window here. Here's our, here's our, um, our lens. I'm going to click the button here that says BK7, which opens a glass table. We'll select the shot catalog. And now here we have the shot glass catalog shown here on the screen. I'm going to simplify this a little bit. I'm going to say preferred glasses only. I'll put it in black. I think it's easier to see. And now look what happened here. Uh, you see this is a symbol for surface one. This, this got stuck on the crown boundary at this point. Surface six is on the crown boundary at this point. And surface three was on the flint boundary way over here. Okay, let's uh, carry this design a little further. Right now the, uh, the lens has some uh, model glasses in it. And let's assume you'd really like to put real glasses in. Well, that's easy to do too. First thing I'm going to do is show the glass names. Up here I'll click on full name. Now it's kind of crowded, so I'm going to enlarge this. Now there's a keystroke sequence that works with many of the features of Synopsys. If I hold down the shift and, and right click the mouse button, things get bigger. If I do a control shift, they will get smaller, but this is the size I want. Now surface one here is near the NLAK14 uh, symbol, so let's put that there. <coughs> Ch uh, put surface one in the box here and click apply. Now surface one has that class assigned. Surface 6 wants to be near this one, so let's click that. Put a 6 in here and click Apply. Now I'm going to look at the flint boundary. We have to pan this screen. I'll show you another uh, uh, easy way to do that. I'm going to hold down the right mouse button and drag over to here. I'm going to click and drag again. And now we're drag it down a little bit. Now we've panned over to the flint boundary. I'm going to collect a, uh, select a flint glass. Put in surface three over here, click apply and close. <clears throat> and now we've assigned those glasses to our lens. So we can check that here. Go back here and type spec and we see we have those glasses on the lens. Now we want to re-optimize because we changed the lens. Uh, EE goes back to the most recent editor here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an exclamation point right here at the front of that variable list, this will comment out the line that was varying the glass models. So now when we re-optimize this lens, the glass types won't change. We'll still vary the radii and the thickness. So let's run this. Okay, here we have re-optimized. And if we go here, we still have our, our glass table glasses. Oh, uh, here's something else I want to show you while we have the, uh, the glass map open. Uh, suppose you want more information about one of these glasses. Well, you can pick one here, click on it, and then go over here and click on Properties. And you get a, a little uh, box that opens up here with all kinds of information about the glass, uh, including a transmission curve, uh, even the, the, uh, the color you'd get going through a sample of glass. And there's more we can do. Let's click on Graph here. Suppose you're interested in glasses that have uh, good stain sensitivity. Well, we can click on that, click OK. Now you see the stain sensitivity of, of these materials. See, this glass here um, has a high stain uh, properties, and some of the glasses down here are, are much better.